it's Ellen Rohr, and we're recording, and here we are at our interactive webinar, How to Create a Profitable Business Plan and Business. It's going to be an action-packed hour. You know, I've had it up to here with webinars that don't tell you anything, and I call these all sizzle, no steak webinars. Have your pencil handy. If you've worked with me before, you'll know what I mean by having your master to-do list ready. That's your list where you write things down. So. Um, uh, be ready to rock and roll. I'm going to tell you how to create a profitable business plan during the seminar over the next 45 minutes. And then I'm going to leave some time open for questions. If in the meantime I uh, you know, say something that's really confusing or you need me to repeat it, or if you're having any technical difficulties, go ahead and type in your question. On your control panel at the bottom, you've got an opportunity to uh, type a question and do that. And occasionally I'll check over on the, the question list, and uh, then we'll keep go, go, going. So I am obsessed with business planning. And I think that business planning can be a great way for you to start, fix, and grow an extraordinary business of your own. But most importantly, I am all about freedom. At Bare Bones Biz, our mission is to expand freedom through profitable, successful business, a business of your own. No bad thing, only good things come from you understanding how to start, fix, and grow a business of your own and to be able to share your unique gifts with others so that you can be of service and make a great living according to your own yardstick, your own sense of measurement. It's all about freedom. And I challenge you to embrace that opportunity to be more free and use your business to help you get there. You know, prior to today, I just got back from Alaska. I've never been to Alaska. My husband and son and I went there. And I posted a couple of pictures on Facebook. It was so much fun to be there. And, and what struck me, now I am an outdoor person. I used to be a professional ski patroller and ski instructor. I taught sailing and windsurfing. I have a deep respect for Mother Nature. Because one of the things you realize when you're out in the out back in the back country is that you're not in control. There is so much beyond your control. There are too many variables. And I think that's what's exciting about going to a place like Alaska, spending some time in the backcountry. And what's interesting, though, is there, the paradox is that while anything could happen, and you may or may not survive a day in the mountains, a day on the sea, a day in the air, professionals will plan that adventure. So while we were in Alaska, one of the things we did is we took a flight up to Mount McKinley and we circled these amazing peaks. And another day we took um, a kayaking tour. And in both cases, I asked for recommendations, I got references, and I found professionals to help me on the path. Now, a professional backcountry, um, uh, you know, a backcountry professional is going to plan that trip. They're going to study the weather, study the sea. Um, they're going to know their gear and their equipment. They're going to start early enough. They're going to know when they need to turn around. They're, by nature, fairly cautious people. There's an old expression, there are old pilots and bold pilots, but no old, bold pilots. In order to be successful exploring the backcountry, you're going to have to plan, or you're well served to plan, let's put it that way. You may like out, you may come back alive, but you are respected as a backcountry professional by the procedure that you use by the planning that you do. So you plan, you go, and then you adjust. And it's so much like business. So the paradox is while you can't control everything, you are well served to pause before you leap and think, hmm, what do I want to do? What do I want to have happen? Now there is an argument for no business plan. And I understand this argument. I just read a really great um, blog on um, Forbes magazine, and this fellow, his name is Ryan, and he was a, f a former gang member, and he's got a criminal past. It's very appealing to me because I work with uh, inmates and guys who are trying to turn their lives around and using business as a vehicle to do that. And Ryan um, expressed in this blog, in this interview, that he wasn't a fan of business planning. And I get that because his, his alternative is he said, you can sit on the shore and you can plan or you can jump in and go. And if I had to pick one or the other, I would every time pick go, just go, just start your business, just make some mistakes, fall in some holes, skin your knees, you know, it's, it's never 
going to go according to plan. No matter how good your plan is, you're not in control of everything. There's too many variables. However, if your business, if your life is not where you want it to be, I think business planning is a great way for you to do two really important things. And this is what a business plan will do for you. If you're writing things down, write this down. This is all a plan needs to do for you. Help you gain clarity about what you want and engage a plan of action for moving in the general direction. You don't need to know every step, but you do need to take action. Why? Because it's fun. It's joyful. I guarantee if you could snap your fingers, and if right now you're, you're getting clear and clear on that you, that you want to have um, eight trucks in your plumbing business, or you want to have a team of 25 consultants, if you're starting to get really clear about what you want in your business, a million in sales, 10 million in sales, you know, the lifestyle starting to come together for you. If you could snap your fingers and make that happen and just be there, there would be less joy in that than the getting there. And again, the paradox is it's the getting there that allows the goal to be achieved. It's the energy in which you engage this business plan that will allow you to reach those goals. But the energy that you walk right now is either aligned with where you want to go or it's away from where you want to go. So the business plan is about gaining that clarity and then identifying some inspired action, something that really makes your heart pound, that will move you in that direction. Because getting there would be great, but the joy of the journey is even better. So no, you don't need a plan to be successful. If you're successful, if you're as successful as you want to be, you're probably not even on this call. But if you're finding yourself feeling like you're on the hamster wheel, like you know, you've know you done the same thing for too long, you're pretty stuck, I'm going to suggest that a business plan is a great tool for you to use to get unstuck. All right, now let's look at what my approach to business planning is. I suggest you get a binder. Now you could use an iPad. You can use your computer. And I'll tell you why I like a binder. It's old school. It's not going to break down. It's not going to crash. You should see me sweat when I come to these. Uh, uh, webinars because uh, you know it stuff can break down. The the call might not go through. At some point, this whole thing could blow up, or we could have an electrical storm. There are just some issues with electronic medium, and there's something really delightful about an old school binder. But the 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 intention of this binder is to move from thought into physical form what you want to have happen. That's the creative process. So get yourself a binder. Now, I happen to have the world's greatest business plan binder, and this was just given to me. Here's a picture of it. One of the, two of the inmates down at Davis Correctional made this for me, and it probably represents about 100 man hours. It's um, carved you know, leather and painted. This is when a tattoo artist and a leather worker meet, and the back of this binder is even more delicious. But I just wanted to show that off. In any event, find something that is beautiful and put your business plan in that. I'm talking about a, basically a three-ring binder, but get something nice. Spend 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever. But find a nice representation of your business plan. Your business plan, your highest work is going to go in here. All right, three-ring binder, and notice that I got it tabbed up on the side. And the tabs on the side are aligned with these sections. Setting site, building the team, making money, getting it sold, getting it done, and making sure. This is what I call the different areas of your business. If you work with a different business guru, they're going to call it different things. It's like a Chevy or a Ford or a Dodge. It doesn't matter. A template is a good idea. Not a dry as dust, fill in the blanks template. I, I'm not a big fan of those. But some structure to your business plan that causes you to think about and engage your intention and your action for every area of your business. This is just what I call them. So setting site, big picture stuff, what do we want to be, do, and have, building the team, who are we going to need to make our dreams come true here, what would they do, what kind of resources would we need. No man is an island. You're going to need somebody to help you, even if you're a one-man shop. Making money, it's my favorite part of the business plan. Getting clear on where you are financially, setting financial goals, coming up with a selling price strategy, keeping score. I love the money make, the making money section of business. And getting it sold. This is all about marketing and sales. Marketing is getting someone to make a reach in your direction. And sales 
is coming to agreement with them. You provide goods and services, they pay you. That's the getting it sold section of your business plan. Getting it done is making good on the promise you made in the sale. On time, on budget, to their satisfaction, to your delight, so that it's a win-win-win all around, so that it can be done consistently, it's scalable, repeatable. And the last section of the business plan I call making sure. Making sure would be your quality assurance section of your plan. What systems do you have in place? What kind of clarity do you have about whether or not you're on track? Are you on track or is your team, is, is, is your team well served by this business? Are your customers well served? That's the making sure section of your business plan. Now, the way I suggest you create a business plan is that it evolves into your operations manual. This is different from the way most folks approach business planning. Most business plans are dry as dust, are fill in the blank templates, are done to satisfy a banker or an investor, and then they're usually put in the drawer or on the shelf to collect dust and never looked at again. Now, if you've ever done that, if that exercise, you know, if you've ever done that, then take that business plan out. Find that business plan that you did once upon a time, and I guarantee just that exercise is valuable because I bet there are some things that you put in that original plan that came to pass. It is so powerful to set your intention down in writing that that very action can cause things to happen for you. So it would be fun and interesting for you if you pulled your old business plan off the shelf, you haven't looked at it in five years, I think you would be pretty surprised and delighted at what things you've made true, you know, what may come to pass. Um, just by virtue of putting it on, putting it on paper and um, letting it cook a little bit, but putting it into the binder is how you manifest this into reality. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do for the, the the rest of our time together is I'm going to go through the basic exercises of some basic exercises that will help you create a business plan. One that not only would satisfy a banker, would satisfy your partner, your dad, your mom, your wife, whoever else you have to sell on this idea would help you sell yourself on this idea. I'm going to help you create a standard business plan, one that would meet all those requirements. But the way I approach it is that this binder will flesh out. And as you develop the additional exercises and structure to this business plan, you are morphing this business plan into an operations manual. And I do this because I've been frustrated by the plan never creating the action that there's a disconnect between most business plans and making things happen, OK? So now, I'm also going to share with you the challenge, some information about a program that we've got called The Challenge. And if you are interested right now, if you've been waiting for this call, you know what, Ellen, get to The Challenge because I want to sign up. I just want to show you that that page is available. If you click on that link, you can go to challengemybusiness.com, and you can click here to take the challenge. The challenge is a program where I help you put your business plan together. Now, um, my friend Simon Sinek said this once. When I do a seminar or a webinar like this, I'm going to tell you how we would work together. I'll tell you how to do it. You can do it yourself. I'm also going to make myself available to help you. Because for some reason, if you're left to your own devices, you may not get it done. Fair enough. That's why when I went to the back country, I took a guide. Right. That's why I will seek out a professional if I'm having trouble getting my arms around what needs to be done or just holding myself accountable. So I'm here to help, and at any time, if you want to go to challengemybusiness.com, you're welcome to do that. And I'll give you some more information about that. In fact, we've got some surprises if you're one of the first 10 people to sign up on tonight's call. We've got some uh, uh, surprises coming for you. But now I'm going to take every section of the business plan and try and clarify it for you. And so you are going to have the information you need to put a plan together. It, you know, if you can make, you make it happen with the information you get today, that would make me very happy. If you need a little more help, we'll, we'll, we'll give you information about that too. Okay, so setting site is about making clear your intention, your intention about what you want. This is the most important part of your business plan. The first exercise in the bare bones biz plan approach to business planning is what I call the perfect life. It is 
by far and away the most powerful exercise in the whole business planning process. Because what it is encouraging you to do is think about what it is you want. What is it that you want? I ask people all the time, well, what do you want? How much money? I want more money. Well, how much would that be? How much do you think, like $2 billion, $10 billion, do you think that would be a burden or a joy? Well, that might be a little much. Well, how much is enough? So what is it for you? You see, what I find in common with every business owner I work with who's successful by their own yardstick is that they get really clear on what they want. And in fact, if you're not as far along in your business and in your life as you thought you would be, I'm going to suggest that there are a few reasons why. One is you don't have a clear idea of what you want or why this business should exist, that you fell into it or you had a good idea once, but you somehow lost it. You're not clear on what you want. That's a reason you get stuck. That's a reason where you might not know where you're going. Another reason is you might be in denial about your financial situation. When I talk about business planning, it is always with this assumption that we're going to create a profitable business. Now, could your business be profitable from the get-go? Yes. Do you have to lose money for years before you earn the right to start making money? No. I'm talking about a profitable business. And if you're in denial about your financial situation or perhaps in denial about what you need to charge or how much money it's going to take to provide for your family and do the things you want to do, you can get stuck. You can get stuck. You can start blaming the economy, blaming your customers, blaming your, your employees. All right, That's another reason you get stuck. Another reason you can get stuck here when it comes to clarifying what it is you want is that you don't have any kind of measurement. So you're not, you wouldn't know if you got there because you never established clearly what it's going to take in time, in dollars, in, in money, in percentages. So if you don't know, you, you can feel lost. You can feel like you're on that hamster wheel of doing it, doing it, doing it, as Michael Kerber says, and never getting where you want to go. The perfect life exercise involves starting at the beginning of the day and saying, OK, I wake up here and describe it. At what time? With whom? Maybe I already got that going for you. And what do you do next? Do you have breakfast? Do you go work out? Do you listen to music? Do you meditate? Do you read something spiritual? What do you do? And do you go to work? Do you have a business? Is this really part of what you want to do, or did you get sucked into it? You know, if part of the business planning process is you decide to stop the business you're in and do something else, I would say this is time well spent. Well spent. We're too old to waste time. So the perfect life exercise is, is going to take you through your day, your life, your whole life. And one of the things you will look at as you review what it is you want to, to be and do is, is your business a boat, a vehicle for getting you where you want to go? All right? <clears throat> so the perfect life exercise is all about allowing yourself the privilege, and in fact, I would say it's responsibility of clarifying what it is you want, unburdened by what other people want for you. Let me tell you a little story, too, about this. Sometimes we get stuck and we can't see, and we don't honor and recognize what it is that we, we have deep inside. You've got to shut up long enough and listen. You know, the 40 days and 40 nights exercise. You know, take some time. The problem in our culture with thinking about what we want is it doesn't look like you're doing anything. So you can never do it. Right? People will think you're doing nothing, heaven forbid. But stop and think. Stop and consider. One of my favorite stories about this is Andy Grove, who was the um, um, CEO of Intel, you know, the dun 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 microprocessor guys. And um, once upon a time, Intel was the world's leader in micro um, memory, in memory chips. And you know they ruled. They had the best product, the best prices, and they had like 75% worldwide market share until some manufacturers in Japan started manufacturing memory chips and started kicking Intel's butt. They were selling better, cheaper, more powerful, bigger memory chips. 
So Andy Grove pulls his COO into the office, and the two of them are sitting there, and they go, you know, we've got a shareholders meeting coming up. What do you think is going to happen? And the COO says to Andy, we're going to get fired. He says, yeah, I know. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we, before we get fired, why don't we fire ourselves? So they did. They fired themselves. They walked out of the building and across the street. And they said, okay, now suppose we're the new kids and we're going to come into our business. <clears throat> what, would that, what would we do as the new guy? So they walked back into Intel as the new kids and they said, we would get out of memory chips altogether. We can't compete in that market anymore. But we could use what the, the resources we have, the manpower, to create processors. And Intel did a radical thing by completely reinventing their company to become the world leader in microprocessors. So I'm going to encourage you to embrace that kind of freedom. I just could kind of feel this like energy. Can you imagine? You know, here you are thinking you're going to go to a, a, a seminar. It's going to tell you a couple things about ratios and raising your prices and putting a little business plan together. Maybe the best thing that could happen is you totally reinvent your life and your business. You see, I am of the age that if we don't get going, you are going to run out of time in this lifetime. Now, we have no promise that we're going to be there today. We can't control all the variables. We don't know we're going to make it through the night, but you probably will. And if you start really thinking about what it is you want, I guarantee the journey is going to be so much more satisfying. All right? So be brave. Take that perfect life exercise and lay claim to what it is you want and write it down. When you saw my business plan open on that first slide, or the slide a couple of slides ago, that first exercise, the first page, is my perfect life. And when I review my business plan, which I do once a week, I sit down, I page through the business plan, but the first thing I do is I look at my perfect life and I acknowledge the moments where it's happening. I embrace them. I celebrate it. And I look at the places that there's still a disconnect between where I am now and where I want to be, and I consider, will my business help me close the gap, help me get there? And if so, I continue it. And if not, the day it doesn't happen, I'll do something else. Okay, so in the perfect life exercise, that's in the setting site section of your business plan. The setting site section would also include your mission, your target market, those people whom you could serve. Your mission is the why should this business exist. These are the big questions, and you can really summarize the setting site exercises you know, in that first tab of your business plan. You can summarize those in the classic journalist questions. What, why, who, for whom, how, how much, those classic journalist questions, ask them of yourself, of your life, and of your business, and they'll help you flesh out that setting site section of your plan, which is really gaining clarity on what, why, you know, you want to have happen. Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? What do you want to have? All right, that setting site. Now let's talk about the building the team section. Building the team section of your business, at the very least, it should include the organizational chart and the position descriptions. Now as I take you through the, the building the team section of the biz plan process, I'm going to give you a little hint. Before I do the organizational chart and before I do the position descriptions, I'm going to encourage you to clean the place up. Clean up your shop. Clean up your desk. Get rid of everything you don't need. And this can be very stressful. I saw that show Hoarders. I didn't realize I had nightmares after I saw it. But I didn't realize how attached people become to their stuff. Now, if, if that's striking a chord with you, you might need some help. There are professional organizers out there. There's an association called NAPO. It's fabulous. There are people who can help you clean up the place. But if you've just gotten a little behind or you're a little bit lazy or a procrastinator about cleaning up the place, nothing will do more for building your team than to create an environment in which sacred work can happen. Lance Secretan told me once that if your office is where you do your best work and your highest thinking, make it an honorable place. Make it a place that where you go into, you are inspired. Clean the place up. This doesn't take a lot of money. It takes more time and, and just energy to out with the old and allow the new to come in. 
And I guarantee you, if your place burned down, it might be the best thing that happened. Oh, I'm probably going to get an email or two. <laughs> It could, you know, just a fresh start. If you've been in business for 10 or 20 or 30 years, what have you got to lose? Abandon the past and start today. Clean up the desk. Clean up the office. Take everything out to the, par the parking lot and set a match to it. All right? Paint the walls. Sweep the floor. Buff everything out. And then put back what is required. And make your place functional and pleasing. Okay? That's huge. Now, in the business plan itself, in the binder, in the section, in the tab that says building the team, I'm going to encourage you to, there's, there's more that can go in here as far as recruiting and other procedures that can help you be um, uh, successful at getting the right people in the right places in your, in your business. But let's make sure that these two, um, these two exercises are completed and part of your overall business plan. One is the organizational chart, and the other is the position descriptions. Now, you've seen an organizational chart. It's, um, you know, there's usually the, the king of the company on top, and then he may have a manager or two who, or she who report to that, that king or queen. And then, you know, you move up the ladder to the, the higher positions of the organizational chart. Now, I've seen a bunch of different approaches to this. I've seen one where the customer is the top of the organizational chart. That's all fine. What we are looking for with an organizational chart is this the chain of command, who reports to whom, and then the basic titles for the positions at your company. All right, someone has to answer the phone. Call that person something, like call taker or customer service rep. If you're a plumbing company, you might need service technicians or service plumbers. If you're a painter, you might need painters. You're probably going to need a bookkeeper. You might need someone in charge of marketing or in charge of the finances. So put together the positions and titles in the organizational chart in such a way that we know to whom do I report. Now, organizational charts can be really powerful and really um, uh, clarifying, and they have a bad reputation. I think organizational charts uh, kind of make some people feel like it's all a little too corporate, a little too structured, maybe a little too military, uh, militaristic, is that the right word? Um, but an organizational chart can help your team members see the structure. Now, you might say, hey, I work all by myself. Well, that's up to you. If you're setting site exercises that cause you to get clear on the fact that you want to work all by yourself, God bless it. That can be a really lucrative, really great way to run a business. However, you're going to be a little bit schizophrenic. This isn't a bad thing. It's just the way it is. You're going to have to wear more than one hat. You're going to have to put your name in more than one position on the organizational chart. So as you do that, that helps you feel a little less overwhelmed because sometimes you can put the hat on of the financial manager and the hat on of the marketing manager and the hat on of the service technician or whatever positions you're going to need to occupy. And every now and then, even as a one-person outfit, you might choose to outsource perhaps some marketing, perhaps some uh, uh, bookkeeping, perhaps somebody to answer the phone. You're welcome to do that. And if you know the different positions that you occupy, that can expand your freedom. All right, so the organizational chart tells the uh, positions the titles, and the reporting relationships. As you grow your company, the reporting relationships are really important because whoever reports to you, you're responsible for their success. Isn't that cool? All right, so on your watch, may I suggest, and you're probably going to smile if you relate to this, might I suggest that the most satisfying thing about being in business and working with a team and building a team is when someone who works with you gets better gets better. And if you can start develop if, if if your setting site exercises have caused you to envision a big organization with managers and a, a ladder of opportunity represented by that organizational chart, boy does it get rewarding and satisfying to help someone who reports to you also become a developer of people. That is for me the most exciting part of the game. Now, the position descriptions are simply a short 
bulleted list of responsibilities that each person on the organizational chart is responsible for, right? So if I'm the bookkeeper, my position description would be to have the financials closed for the previous month by the 15th of the month, to have the financial quick check, the one-page weekly financial report, on the owner's desk by 10 a.m. or in his inbox, if we're going to send it electronically, by 10 a.m. on Friday morning. To have um, full compliance with all the tax requirements of my uh, uh, um, industry or my area. To have the um, human resources requirements handled for all employees. Now, a position description is a bulleted list of what to do. What to do. How to do it. Well, we'll address that in the getting it sold section of your business plan. And this is also another way that the business plan morphs into an operations manual. That's just a little, a little spoiler alert, a little hint. OK, now I'm going to be opening up for questions at about a oh, quarter of 10 of the hour. I'm just trying to keep an eye on the clock here. So if you have a question, you can either type it in, or you can just save it and raise your hand, and we'll open up for questions. I'm going to move quickly. I want you to see the business planning, you know, let me just say this. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed, you can't do this wrong. There's, there's no way to do a business plan wrong. Anything that you do that helps you stop and think about what you want and then take action that's aligned with that is good. No bad thing can come from that. So that makes you feel a little better. Great. OK. Now. The next section, the next tab in your binder, the next section of your business that we're going to address, I call making money. And this is really the financial component of your business. I'm going to, in, in, in my approach to business planning, I definitely, a, a, what's the word I'm looking for? I um, address, that's the word, address the tactics. I am all about simple, basic financial system so that you can know where you are financially, you can make all the money you want. And I like to say it this way, while demonstrating your integrity and deepening your commitments, there needs to be no disconnect between your highest purpose and a lot of money. Okay, Money is just an expression, a form of energy. But what I find is this is the area of your business and your business plan where you might get stuck. And you'll get stuck on the making money section, getting to a known financial position, understanding what your financials are, you know, what's a balance sheet, what's a profit and loss, you know, what do these forms tell you? How do you make better, faster decisions based on the data? It's not that hard to figure out the financial area of your business. But more than any other area of your business, it brings up your stuff. All right, this is it brings up your um, lack of self-esteem. Uh, Mark Victor Hansen said, you can raise your prices, you can make more money, you can raise your prices as often as you raise your self-esteem. So this is often the place where you can get stuck in your, in your business plan and in your life. I will, my approach is to help you tactically. Let's just dig in. Let's learn the language of business. Let's get to a known financial position. Let's put a budget in place. My encouragement is just do it. Do it no matter what comes up. Keep going. Because what you'll find is there's going to be some successes connected with your ability to get to a known financial position, make sense of the financial reports. And it'll be a lot more fun than you probably suspected. I'm going to kind of nudge you past some of those emotional issues. Now, should you um, take a meditation course? Should you work on your own beingness issues? Should you take some counseling or go to an AA meeting? Oh, honey, I'm all for it. That's really the, the spiritual and psychological issues that may be holding you back are really the bigger deal. But sometimes what I find is that if we act as if we are a certain way, it can help us lay claim to that reality. We start to act as if we're wealthy people and good stewards of our money. It can help us release the sticking points, 
unleash the energy that's been holding us back in terms of allowing the wealth that we really want to come to us. So I'm going to suggest you do both. You work on your spirituality. You work on your beingness, absolutely. In addition to that, do the basic things that one could do as a business owner to be a better financial steward. Get to a known financial position. Figure out your balance sheet. Figure out your profit and loss. Sit side by side with a successful business owner, your CPA, someone who says, yeah, I'd love to help you understand this stuff. It's not so hard. And figure out where the money is and where it goes. All right? Now, if you want to be a millionaire, our balance sheet will tell you this. I mean, this is business is easy. If we have more in stuff than we owe on it, if our assets minus our liabilities equal a million dollars, you're a millionaire. Now, I'm, I'm oversimplifying this, but not really. That's how it works. Learning the language of finance is going to help you so much in your business and in your life. So I'm, you know, we only have so much time to dig into this. My overall advice to you in this section of your business plan is to press on. Commit to learning what you need to know. What's a balance sheet? What's a, a profit and loss? Where do I stand in terms of my net worth? Am I a millionaire? Do, am I a double millionaire, a decamillionaire, or do I owe? Is my uh, liability greater than my equity? Where are you now? Because what I promise is you can make it better. Now, the making money section is my favorite part of, of business because from the making money section, what we can do is we can create profits. Profits are when you sell stuff for more than it costs and you have something left over. And if you collect those profits in cash, I'm telling you, it's solved about every financial problem you're ever going to have. Making a profit is money from nothing. You manufacture money more money than you expense. See, that's where it comes from. That's when we talk about growing an economy, we're talking about that. Now, one of the tools in the bare bones biz plan, one of the tools in any business plan, is to create a budget. Now, what a budget does is it helps you come up with some pretend numbers. What do I want for sales? What do I want for expenses? And I've got to craft that budget in such a way that sales are bigger than expenses. So what I suggest you do is you start with the expenses first. Put a little budget together. Could you use a piece of paper and a pencil? Yes. Some of the inmates at Davis Correctional have put some awesome budgets together with a pencil and a paper. They don't have a calculator. They don't have a computer. But they get this. All right. So start with your expenses. What do you want for your salary? What do you want for your trucks and your your uh, uniforms and the, the equipment you need to use and insurance and marketing and all those expenses, then create a sales line that's bigger than the expenses to the tune of the profit that you want. Is budgeting that easy? It is. There's a quote that I like that says, I'm indeed rich since my income is superior to my expense and my expense is equal to my wishes. Cool, huh? So you get to make this up. That's what business planning is. I get so excited talking about it because we make it up. We envision it. The budget is going to do two really cool things for us. Okay. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'll make sure I cover this. When you put a budget together, I heartily recommend that you have a budget buddy. Now, a budget buddy is someone that you say, hey, will you budget with me? And I go, oh, okay, I will. It holds you accountable. And one other person's eyes are going to see something you might miss. And you can have a little discussion about it. But if you plan, OK, we're going to work on our budget Thursday afternoon. OK, meet me there on the phone or side by side. You'll probably be more likely to get it done. It'll be a lot more fun. I'm a huge fan of budgeting with somebody else. Could you budget with somebody from your company? Sure. Could you budget with your husband? Only if you're not going to argue. You know, find somebody who's going to be fun here. Start with the expenses. Make the sales line bigger than the expenses to the tune of the desired amount of profit that you want. And girlfriend, boyfriend, you've just put a budget together. Can you get fancier than that? Sure. Could you put together three or four versions, a $1 million in sales budget, a $5 million in sales budget, budget for this year, a budget for next year, a budget if I work by myself, a budget if I bring on a partner? Sure. You can do all that. And it's not that hard. Don't fuss too much. You can't know all the variables. Just go. Just dream and write it down. There's no wrong in any of it. Then 
Here's another place where your business plan is going to morph into your operating system. What I'm going to encourage you to do is to measure your actual performance to what you budgeted. What's the disparity between what you want and what you have? And that difference is where the game is. What could I then do that would move me closer to my goal? And just pick something and go. This is the theme of business planning. Plan, do, assess. Do it again. Right? It's never over. Now, the biggest variable in your budget is going to be labor. How much do you want? How much do you want to pay the great people that work with you or are going to come to work with you? The difference between a high-priced provider and a low-priced provider in any industry is going to be how much the owners want. The owners want in terms of the shareholders, the owners want to pay for them, you know, to, to take out in terms of compensation for themselves and for their team. It is the big variable. So setting a budget, the one thing it's going to do is going to help us come to terms with this. Because I got news for you, unless you plan to take money out of your company, there's rarely any money left. And raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about here. It just it usually doesn't happen that there's money left unless we anticipate it, plan for it, and then charge enough to make it all happen. So budgeting, come up with a couple of scenarios. You could plan the next division. You could plan for the next generation. You could have some fun here. OK, now budgeting does two things. I said one is that it helps us set goals. We can match our actual performance against our budgeted um, uh, goals and, and see how we're doing and change direction. Oh, that's just delicious. The other thing that budgeting can help us do is come up with a justifiable selling price. OK, so suppose this, is good, this might make you poop your pants here a little bit, so just hang tight with me. If you put a budget together and you put in that budget that you want to make $200,000 a year for your salary, and if you could work 1,000 hours per year, I'm just going to give you a little example of how budgeting and numbers crunching, this is part of the making money section of your, budget, of your business plan. If you want to use that, this, um, one of the exercises in the business plan in the making money section is how much to charge for your time how much to charge for your widget so that you can make the money you want, so you can get that top line of the budget. You might have to do a little calculations, and sometimes this gets scary. Like, oh, let me go backwards. In this little um, calculation, the, uh, let me start, ooh, oh, shoot. Well, that's not too bad. Sorry about that. <laughs> OK, so suppose you want to make 200 grand. I just picked these numbers because they were easy to play with the math. And suppose you wanted to work 1,000 hours per year. That would be 20 hours a week for 50 weeks. Now you have other things to do in your business. So suppose you're a one-person show. You're selling your services. Maybe you're a massage therapist or you're a plumber or um, uh, you know someone who sells a coach, someone who sells what they do in the widget of time. About half of your time could be spent delivering your goods and services for which you could charge. That's where the 1,000 hours per year comes from, 50 weeks a year times 20 hours a week. OK, if you charged $200 an hour, you could make that $200,000, but you haven't bought a pencil yet, or a truck, or a massage table, or a, you know, a float switch, or whatever else you're going to need for your business. What happens as you put a business plan together? is that you're going to come face to face with the fact that you're not charging enough. I guarantee that'll happen. And it's scary when you do. It is. So we jump into the getting it sold section of the plan. Okay, And I put these in order, setting site, building the team, making money. Because at this point, at the making money point, if you are getting clearer and clearer on what you want, and you start to come to terms with what, what you're going to have to charge. And if you realize that your selling prices are going to have to go up, and you probably will, then I'm going to suggest you get better at marketing and sales. 
Are you willing to charge what you need to charge? And can you add enough value to get to yes? That's what you explore in the getting it sold section of your business plan. Now, the way I put a business plan together is I want to help you create that binder, create the structure. But there's room in my world for other voices, for other people. Like I am, I know a lot about sales, but I tell you, as someone who makes sales, I like to listen to sales professionals. I like to attend sales seminars. And so the Bare Bones Biz Plan, this structure, this binder, allows you to reach outside the information that I give you and supplement it with things that you're doing that work or new voices. And the key is you. Your job is to make sure you don't get too confused or have too many voices going on. In the getting it sold section of your business plan, I do suggest you find a sales guru. A few of my favorites are Tom Hopkins, Jeff Gittimer, if you don't mind swearing, and I don't. He is hysterical and he's really good. He's a really, he's a love biscuit, this guy. Kind of rough around the edges. And for some people, he's very entertaining and really, really has a great sales philosophy. Tom Hopkins is a lot more soft, um, low-key, low-pressure selling. Brian Tracy is really good. Uh, Zig Ziglar is fantastic. There are tons of people. There may even be some industry-specific people. Howard Partridge, if you're a carpet cleaner, has just fantastic sales stuff. So you can supplement this business plan. In fact, this is what really brings it to life and keeps it going. You can supplement this business plan by incorporating into the different areas of your business plan different gurus as needed. And certainly in the marketing and sales section of your business plan, you may choose to adopt a sales professional or a marketing professional to help you put your marketing calendar together, to help you put your sales processes together. Again, I know a lot about sales. And in the Bare Bones Biz Plan, in this section, we're going to take you through putting together a great sales culture, getting rid of sales phobia at your company, keeping score, having a rockin' sales meeting. Those are the things that will help you get better at marketing and selling at premium prices. Because I got news for you. You're not going to make it at the going rate. That's why you're on the call. Right? You're going to have to raise your prices. And as you crunch the numbers, it'll get clearer to you. And as you get to the getting it sold section, you're going to get better and better at doing it. OK, now in the getting it done section of your business plan, two things I really want you to adopt and, and make note of today. In the getting it done section, I'm going to talk to you about um, you know, putting your calendar together, making sure that you're structuring your time, planning your time. And here's a couple of suggestions for, for reducing overwhelm and moving forward with the action required to help you achieve your goals and to enjoy this journey, to enjoy this backcountry adventure of business building. Two invaluable tools, two parts of this getting it done section of your business plan are the master to-do list and the top projects list. Okay, now the master to-do list is simply a spiral notebook, three-hole punch. This is what I use. But the key is one thing, one piece of paper that you have with you all the time on which you write stuff that has to be written down. So what this means, my friends, is the end of Post-its all over your desk like a crazy person, the end of little slips of paper on every surface have one place to write things down. And that's what I talk about with the master to-do list. This has transformed people's lives. Eliminate the post-its, get one notebook, and write down stuff that needs to be written down in one place. Now, at least they're parked there. Maybe it's phone calls, maybe it's projects, maybe it's uh, ideas for a new division at your company, but just write them down in one place because they're going to stay there until they go to another section of your business plan until you commit to those actions on your, your uh, calendar, or you put them on your top projects list. The difference between the master to-do list and the top projects list is the master to-do list is the catch-all. The top projects list is when you elevate a few of the items that are on your master to-do list to top priority. If you want to get this business plan to done, at least the first draft, 
put it on your top projects list. If you want to get to a known financial position once and for all and figure out your asset from your elbow, put that on your master to-do list. If you want to create a training center, a marketing campaign, if you want to rebrand your company, projects are beefier than a simple to-do. A to-do is a one-off. I'll call my mother. Okay, check. Did it. A project is create a marketing plan with a marketing calendar, budget, and allocation. That's a project. Put it on your top projects list. And here's the key. Once a week, go to your calendar. Flip through this business plan that you're developing. Look through your master to-do list. Look through every section of your business plan. And then decide on a few top projects. Write them down. And then commit to action. Engage your calendar and move from thought, from paper, to doing this. And take action in the direction of your dream business. If you don't do this, your day is going to get away from you. It's, you, you before you know it, it, the week is going to be over. You're going to be on that treadmill yet again. Now, I know I'm talking fast. I've got a lot of stuff that's going on here. You know, you can listen to this again. I'm going to record it. Woohoo! And um, uh, I'm going to be answering questions in just a little bit. My hope with this 45 minutes was just to power pack it with information. Put your business plan together, right? And then once a week, meet with yourself, review your top projects list, your master to-do list, write your calendar down, look through your business plan, and start taking action. Plan or be planned for is what one of my mentors told me every single time I talked to him. Are you inspired to take charge of your business? I hope so. I hope that this time together has been well worth it. One more section of your business plan, and we're going to open it up to questions. And, ooh, we've got some, so this is, this is fun. OK, the last section of your business plan is a section I called making sure. Now, this section is generally not in most business planning templates. And this is what making sure is all about, the quality assurance department at your company, including, is this business working? So let's say. Every now and again, maybe once every six weeks, you are willing to ask yourself this question. Should this business stay or should it go? Is the, the compelling vision that I crafted in the setting site section of the plan still appealing to me? Do I have the right people on board? Am I making the money that is required for this to be worthwhile? Am I engaging in sales, getting to a yes so I can keep this engine running? Am I making good on my promises in the getting it done section of my business plan? The making sure section is where you pause and consider, should this business continue? Is it serving me? Is it serving my people, the people who work with me? And is it serving my customers? So in this section of your business plan, this might be where you have your mystery shopping procedures. This might be where you commit to playing hooky for a day, taking some time off and considering, do I want to continue? Because every day that you pause and, and operate on autopilot, you miss the opportunity to really, really live on purpose. So that is bare bones business planning, woohoo, in a nutshell. Now, we're too old to waste time. I want to talk to you about the challenge uh, briefly, and then I've got a couple of questions here. The challenge is right here, challengemybusiness.com. If you click on that link here, Challenge My Business, you'll go right here to the Bare Bones Biz Plan page, challengemybusiness.com. And the first 10 people who click on this to take the challenge are going to get a bonus. Now, here's what the challenge is. I'm going to work with you to get your business plan done. We're going to be in a group webinar environment. We're going to meet every week for eight weeks. And we're going to meet in a live interactive program where I lay out the week to come. I check your homework during the week if you're brave enough to send it over. You can get on the call live, and we'll, we'll do some interactive coaching, which is absolutely in fa fantastic. But the key is that you're going to get your business plan in. Because if you haven't got it together by now, why not allow yourself to be helped? So we're going to meet every week. You're going to get some personal coaching time with me. We're going to be on the phone together. 
and everyone who signs up will get a 30-minute private phone session as part of the program where I'll look at your business plan. Now you get to network with other biz plan challengers, and I'm going to have little contests and gifts for people who participate. You get the complete suite. This is everything I got. It's going to arrive in a big box with all the tools you need to create your business plan. We sell this for $595. That's included in the, in the Biz Plan Challenge. You'll get an audio companion. You'll get the recordings of all the calls. And best of all, you won't have to go it alone. It's the accountability factor. This is the seventh time I've done the challenge. It's the accountability factor that most folks say they find the most powerful as far as signing up with the challenge. Now here's how you sign up and then you know we want to answer questions and I'm happy to stay after a little bit. You can um, you know sign up now by clicking on uh, challengemybusiness.com. Go for it. If you do, if you're one of the first to sign up, you're going to get two additional one-to-one -one coaching hours with me. Now when I when I work with folks on the phone and I charge for that time, it's $250 an hour. So that's another $500 value, two hours, and you can split it up. You can use half hours or you can use full hours, or you can meet for two full hours at a time. But that would be me to you time, OK? The price for the challenge is $1,295 through the 11th of September. And then we kick off on September 16th. Jumps to $1,495. If you're ready to go, go. And I'm even going to break it up into three payments for you to make it super easy to cash flow this, this program. Now, i got to tell you. One of the questions is, I've mentioned raising prices as a way to be more successful. And I would love to get Robert on the phone. If that, oh, Robert, hi, because I think this would be a lot of fun. But I've got to tell you, the price of this program, given the fact, especially if you sign up now and you get some me-to-you time, you get the complete suite, the value far exceeds already what we're charging for it. But these prices, you know, to, to, to split that up into three payments really is going to involve one extra sale for most of you if your average ticket is four or $500 as a service business. If it's more than that, you know, what's it going to take for you to get that business plan done? Hopefully today got you inspired. If you want a little more help, the challenge is available to you, and we would love to have you join us. Okay, now I'm going to open up, and Robert, I want to talk to you about selling prices. And this is definitely something that a little bit of love and support. Oh, you know what, Robert? I don't have, um, oh yeah, I do. There you go. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you, Alan. How are you? Hi. It's so good to hear from you. It's good to hear your voice. Uh, I'm looking at the, uh, the attendees list, and it's like summer camp. Hi, everybody. And it's nice to talk to you. I have mentioned raising prices a couple of times. I'll tell you why I like a price increase is that it's the only thing I can do that creates more profit without more expense. If I raise my prices, all other things being equal, and this is a, um, a theoretical, you know, a hypothetical. Think there's always some variables. But if I raise my prices and all other things are equal, those that increase in selling price is going to flow to the bottom line. And what I find with business owners is they're just not profitable enough, and they're trying to squeeze money out of a stone. Is it that the market is hyper-competitive, as you suggest, or is it that you could get better at marketing and sales? And boyfriend, I'm going to challenge you that that might be the case. Well, there's, there's probably truth to all of that, but my question really is bigger in that if you're already in a hyper-competitive marketplace, so a, call it an old marketplace, and different from the classic service model where you know, often your competition shows up in a less than first class way and there are ways that you can really separate yourself from the from your competition. In an older industry, um, and in my background is in manufacturing, you know, when you run into literally it's the case where in near commodity environment, even though you know you can certainly separate yourself with quality to some degree, but if in the mind of your client you're still essentially selling a commodity. You know, where do you go with that other than Well, this this is some tough love. Are you ready? You, you can be you can be right about that. You know, I can't I can't make you wrong about that. But a business plan and the process of business planning is your opportunity to ask the big questions like why are you so attached to that market? 
And a guy like you, I happen to know Robert, a guy like you is pretty skilled. So perhaps another division, perhaps a new direction altogether, or perhaps, you know, just it's time to shut the sucker down. But a business plan can help you get really clear because if you really believe that you don't have the option to raise your prices, I would challenge you to find a different division, a different industry, a different approach. And that's really, you know, what business planning is all about because if you don't, you're still a fairly young guy. I got a couple of years on you. What happens is it's 10 years later and you will wonder if you should have. So this, that you may be right about that. And if you could find, you know, if a business plan, that's why I include the making sure section of a business plan is that you don't have to do this. You know, the people that I work with who say, you don't understand, Ellen, how committed I am to this. You don't understand how much I, I, this has to work. As soon as I hear that, my blood runs cold because you know what? It doesn't. It doesn't. And it can get worse than zero. It can get worse than going out of business. You know, I have a client who called me up a million and a half in debt. Okay? Now, you can fix it. You can fix just about any, anything. But you do have to question your assumption and really what you're committed to. And I know your industry, you're in that, um, uh, we met at the National Chimney Sweep Skills um, oh, yeah. program, right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm familiar with your industry. I'm not the end-all expert there, but I know that there certainly are some challenges when it comes to some of the commodities or the commodity price, you've got to get out of that commodity mindset and you've got to work on marketing and sales in such a way so that you are no longer comparing apples to apples in your industry with your offering. Now this, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in on another question that we have here because this, this applies. Trista, you have a question. Is this business plan, the planner that I'm describing, mainly for a service business or a retail business? I have a lot of experience with service businesses, but the approach of creating a binder and asking the questions and going through a business plan, it works for any business. And uh, you know, we've had um, uh, uh, Mary, one of my favorite challengers, sold uh, bakery goods. She's a, the pie lady at um, in her company. It, it'll work for any business. And there is some advantage to being in an industry that may be different from some of the other folks, like many of the folks on the call and many of my clients are contractors. But if you're not a contractor, to look at your industry through the eyes of someone else can be helpful. And so that's again why the challenge opportunity can be just what you need. If you're thinking about it, you know, get, I, would, I would not let that deter you. The other thing is, you know, I've had a lot of experience in different industries. I used to have a, a great career in, in restaurant, and I've had, you know, work in all kinds of different industries. I've kind of made myself a business uh, a business file. I love them. So I can help shed some perspective on any business and ask you the question, just like I'm doing to Robert here. Robert, my goal in this program would ha be to have you question your assumptions. Because if you do really believe that there isn't a way to add that value, I would challenge you to find another division or another industry. And if you, if as I say that, you think, no, 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 I can pull this off, that might be the kind of that you can't approach that somebody like you needs to really quantum leap to the next level of your business. I can hear you thinking. Oh, did I lose you? No, I, I thought I heard you thinking. <laughs> no, I, I'm here. I just was muted, so you didn't get any background. Oh, okay. That was sweet. Uh, no, it's an interesting perspective. It's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's there. There are obviously challenges that are a little bit different in manufacturing than in service, and especially in, in again, what I would consider older industries that you know they've gone through those traditional growth cycles where. You know, early on, there's lots of margin. Absolutely. But you know, one of the other the other things to consider as you put your business plan together would be that, you know, who is your target market? Now, there are some people who are going to shop for price in any industry, and there are some people who are going to want safety, and others who are going to want to save the planet. Now, who are you serving? Part of the getting uh, the setting site section, and this is going to be revisited as we get to the getting sold section, is identifying who cares about what it is that you do, because not everybody's going to care, and unless they care, they're not going to buy. 
So that's another thing to do. And the really good news about this, and this applies to anybody's business, the really good news about this is it doesn't take as many clients as you think to create a rockin' business. By way of example, one of my clients is a service contractor, Chicago area. He just cleaned up his customer list and he has 15,000 people in his customer list. Now, most people don't buy plumbing and heating every year. They might use it average of two to four times a year, use a service provider. And in that case, 15,000 active customers, folks who've used them over the last five years sometime, he has an $8 million company. So he's in Chicago. There's 5 million people he could drive past, but he found the right 15,000. So how many is it for you? This is, again, where business planning can, 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 can be of service to you. Oh, my gosh, it's already 5 after 7. Hey, I want to, um, Robert, can I, ask, um, can I ask someone else to come on the line if they're still on? Of course. Absolutely. Yay! Well, I am so happy to, to visit with you, and I'd love to see you in the challenge. All right, you have a wonderful day. Woohoo! Okay. And uh, Trista, if you're still there, I'd love to talk about your business. Let me... I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me. Can you hear me? Hey, Trista. Oh, I, it could be Trista that I don't have um, that your microphone isn't isn't working. So I'm, again, I hope that that's of service to you. It, it, you know, it's service retail. It really doesn't matter. Think about what you want. Gain clarity and set a course of action that's going to move you in the direction of what you really, really, really want. Hey, um, I got another question from uh, somebody who recently bought the complete suite. That is a great question, and here's what I'm going to do. If you recently bought the complete suite, let's say you bought the complete suite within the last year, I am happy to deduct the $5.95 from your purchase price of the challenge. So yeah, sign up today and just put that, make a note of that in your order form when you click on through. That would be, uh, that's a good uh, bonus. Now, if you're one of the first 10 people to sign up, I'll also provide two additional hours of me to you coaching. Now, that's at your convenience with the understanding that I know you're busy and so am I. So as you sign up today, I'm going to schedule those blocks of time based on who signs up first. Now, I'll tell you where this is going to be really helpful to you is during the making money section of your business plan. You know, not necessarily, but a lot of people get bogged down at that making money point. Robert's question was just about raising prices. It is absolutely an area that's going to bring up some fear, some resistance, and I can help you with that. And some extra time, me to you, could be just what you need to get over the hump and really start to you know, get profitable in this business. It's not an exercise just for the sake of of, uh, of putting a binder together, it's to make your life more free. And that making money section, the profitable promise of a business plan approach like this is really worth the, uh, the extra time that we could spend together. I would love to be of service to you that way. So let me just check and see who else has uh, a question. Oh, hi. I saw Doug that you were there. You're such a sweetheart. Thanks for the shout outs on the, the questions. If you've got another question, raise your hand. Otherwise, I'm going to let you go, go, go. Go to challengemybusiness.com. Click here to take the challenge, and we'll get you signed up. If, there, if you've already bought the complete suite, hey, there's going to be a point where you get to um, put in a little other information to say, I already have the complete suite, thanks, and I'll deduct that from your purchase price. The first 10 people that sign up are going to... Um, uh, uh, get two extra coaching hours with me during the course of the challenge. The challenge starts on September 16th. The early bird pricing is right now. And we make it in three easy payments, 435. What could you do between then and now with a clear vision of what you want that will allow you to make up that price? This is a no-brainer. So if you want a little help, the challenge is available to you. I wish you love, peace, and lots of money, and the freedom that your own business promises. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.